OK, so uh, let's build this uh, simple user admin uh, web page here. We had started on creating the static version of this using um, a table, uh, using a bootstrap to lay it out uh, with, uh, with, the, with some input fields, um, you know, styled a table, styled a couple of, uh, couple of these uh, buttons on the right-hand side. Let's see what we, what we have so far. Okay? Uh, let's see. Let's um, open up the, um, the we have uh, courses, login. Um, where do we put um, the user admin? Did we get started on the user admin? I believe we did, didn't we? Where did I put it? Uh, courses, Java. Oh, I know. This is not it. Let me uh, open. Is this one? Summer one. Summer one. There we go. Okay. There it is. So this is the uh, admin page that we had started on. Let me run that. And this is what we had so far, right? And at the bottom, we were we were adding, we were playing around with jQuery with JavaScript. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump into jQuery and see how we can make this uh, dynamic. All right, let's do that. Okay, so let me let's see, let's open that up, and it's this page right here. And let me close everything else. Uh, and down below, we were just playing around with uh, what with, with some low-level JavaScript that we might uh, want to play around with, right? So. I'm going to create here a dedicated JavaScript file in the same location as my HTML, right? Everything that the, this feature needs, right? The HTML template, the CSS, the JavaScript that, that controls this page is going to live in the same directory, right? So this will be user admin, so the same feature admin. Then the, um, the, the role of this file uh, will be the uh, role of a controller in a model view controller design pattern, right? It'll be responsible for handling any user, in, any user input, right, as they generate events, right, as they click, as they type, as they generate events. This uh, will be a controller, right, that uh, will be handling all these events, right. It's also going to be responsible for uh, perhaps going out to the server and, and fetch some data, right, and provide this data back to the front end. Yes? Component? All right, so components are even a little higher, higher uh, level, right? And, and usually the components play the role of the controller, right? And so yeah, so let's let's go with the naming convention. So compo component, uh, this is running on the on the browser side, right? And this is a JavaScript. All right, excellent. So so just just to make sure that uh, we know that we're um, loading. Hello world, right? We're going to load this this JavaScript from our uh, from our HTML template, right? We're going to blow away all this JavaScript, right? And instead, we're going to load our our JavaScript uh, code here. So we're going to point to the local file, and it's that one, I believe. There it is. And let's see. Let's uh, reload our page, and indeed it says "Hello World." All right. So we have that JavaScript loading. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so if we go into that uh, JavaScript. Uh, we're also going to be using a good practice of, um, of embedding all our source code in a small little module. Yes. Uh, so if it's, a, if, it's a, um, uh, if, if its responsibility is to, is to deal with one particular template, the best thing is to keep it in the same uh, directory uh, as the feature that you're implementing. If it's something that is more common, that is used amongst many other folks, then you could put a, dire a separate directory uh, and you could put it in there. Oh, the tag. I'm sorry. Uh, this tag. Uh, I am deliberately putting it at the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the document, you know, right before the closing of the body. Uh, typically, all these would really live um, oops, up here in the, in the head. This is where, where syntactically this would be correct. All right. Uh, but um, oftentimes we break that uh, that uh, that rule and instead put it uh, down at the body of uh, the end of the body. And the reasons are twofold. You know, one of them is the the DOM hasn't yet been parsed yet by the browser, so there's nothing really for us to control just yet. Okay, we could put code in the script to wait for the for the uh, DOM to 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 load, 
right? And, and then be notified so that we can then start manipulating the DOM. Uh, that's, that's one reason to put it at the bottom. Uh, the other reason to put it at the bottom is that oftentimes these files might be too big, might be fairly heavy JavaScript files, and, uh, and, uh, and it, it, would, it would introduce some lag uh, if we put it at the top of, this, of, the, uh, of the document uh, before any, do any HTML gets rendered. Right? Uh, so any lag that we could remove from the rendering, the better. Right? So we could put it at the bottom, you know, pump content to the user as fast as we can you know, to catch their eye, and then later, you know, load any extra any any extra content uh, in in the background. Make sense? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, well, those two things, right? But uh, we could definitely use document dot to listen for when it's done, right? But I'm all, so the second that's that's how we can deal with the first reason. But the second reason is this could be pretty big, right? Oh, put it at the bottom. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, so this, um, this, I mean, obviously, our JavaScript is trivial, right? It's, uh, it doesn't, we don't really need to put it at the bottom, but nevertheless, it's a good practice, right? All right, okay, let's go in there. Um, all right, so we're going to be using the best practice of, um, since we're not using ES6, we're not using uh, the, mo yet, we're not using the modern uh, JavaScript. Uh, instead, we're, we're still using ES5. Um, I'm, I'm going to hide in my, my, uh, all my content, all my uh, source code inside of an iffy, right? An immediately invoked uh, function expression, okay? So that I don't litter the namespace, right? If I'm competing with other, other libraries with you know, names of functions, names of variables, I don't want to compete with them. I don't want to overwrite any of anything that everybody else is, is loading. So I'm going to embed all my code in an iffy uh, expression. Everybody okay? Right, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, the other thing is that um, uh, I am now ready to start doing some jQuery uh, coding. Uh, not quite yet, since we don't have jQuery loaded. All right, so let's, uh, let's load uh, jQuery. Let's see. Uh, ideally, this would be from, from a CDN. Uh, why are you? OK. Uh, so let's see if we can get a jQuery, jQuery CDN. I'll probably go to jQuery.com and give us a snippet on what it is that we want to uh, grab. So let's see. We're going to use a, um, uh, a minified version, and we can copy it from here. Let's copy it uh, so that uh, we can then come here and just paste it. Uh, we could put it at the bottom, too. Oh, it didn't copy. What's going on? Copy. I'm going to put it at the bottom as well. I'm going to put it right before mine, right? Because mine is going to assume that jQuery has been loaded, right? So I, I put it right before mine, and then there's there's my uh, J, my uh, JavaScript. Um, all right. So just to test if uh, jQuery uh, did load, right? We could use a um, uh, we can start using the, uh, the the jQuery alias to see if this loaded. And if you remember, uh, we could pass as an argument a function. Uh, that will be invoked if jQuery has loaded, if the document has loaded. It'll notify us and call this function. All right? And from here, we say, we're going to say alert, uh, you know, welcome from jQuery. All right, so let's, uh, let's load that. And indeed, it says welcome from jQuery. So jQuery has been loaded, and, and now we have full control of the page. We can start doing things with the page. Everybody okay? All right? Yes. Right. So, so uh, now this this syntax is a little bit disturbing. Uh, some folks are uh, you know, look at this and says, "What is it that you just wrote?" Uh, it's just a, an anonymous function. It has no name. Right. It's very very common in jQuery and JavaScript in general to do to use anonymous functions. Again, because we don't want to litter the namespace. Right. It's uh, if if you can get away with, with, with to do something without naming it, uh, even better. Right, so here we don't have to name the function, but because we are already inside of an iffy statement, it doesn't really matter. I can define, I can define a, a, a function and give it a name, init, whatever name I want, init, and then I can just pass it as an argument to, to jQuery. It says, hey jQuery, uh, whenever the page finishes loading, 
notify me by calling this callback function called init. All right? So this should run the same way. Oops. Load. There we go. So it still works. Everybody okay? Yes? The, what do you mean? Oh, oh the, 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 the var function equal? No, there's functionality, there's no, there's no, there's no difference. Yeah. Uh, all right, excellent. So, uh, but one, one point here is that uh, in, in, Java, in JavaScript, just to, just to your point, is that uh, Java, JavaScript doesn't distinguish between objects, you know, data and functions, right? Functions are treated just as, just as uh, any piece of data. You can pass functions uh, just as easily as you can pass uh, data, right? Which is, which is going to come very, very um, convenient in our, in our implementation. All right, excellent. Now, this, this what I'm doing here is, is somewhat unnecessary, right? As I mentioned uh, yesterday, we do this to be notified when the DOM has completed loading, yes? Uh, but since we are putting our JavaScript all the way at the bottom, we know that the DOM has already loaded, right? It, can, it, it has to be loaded, right? So I don't really even need to do any of this. I know it has been loaded. I don't need to ask for notification, okay? I know it's loaded. I can start manipulating right away, okay? So for instance, one of the things that I could do is I can start grabbing things from the, from the DOM. Uh, let me grab the body. I can grab the body. So grab, and then I can pass in a selector, a CSS selector, right? And I, I can grab the body, uh, and I can assign it to a, a, um, a local uh, variable, right, the body. OK? Uh, and then I can start using the API that jQuery gives me, right? Uh, if I'm using low-level uh, JavaScript, I would use you know, get uh, element by ID, uh, inner HTML, all those are all low-level API, right, which we're not going to use for the, for the remainder of the semester. Instead, we're going to be using uh, jQuery's high-level API to deal with, uh, with, the, uh, with, the, um, with, the, uh, with the DOM, right? So for instance, one of the things that I can do is I can grab the body, right, and, and, and we get all sorts of uh, uh, cool functions that were not there before, right? It adds all these really cool functions, for instance, append. What would you think a pen does? Right? It allows you to append content right, to elements that you might already have. So this allows me to append to the body. Maybe in H1, it says, uh, welcome to jQuery. Okay, so that if I run this, notice that we have this welcome to jQuery right, uh, at, the, at the end over here. See that? Right? That was dynamically added by jQuery. Right? It's, it wasn't in the original DOM. I right, notice that uh, nowhere in my HTML is there an H1 there, right? So the, the document is still the same. But as far as the uh, browser is concerned, that, that HTML element, H1, is as real as everything else. It's as real as some other H1 that was loaded from the document, right, from the, uh, uh, from the HTML document. It's just as real. You know, we manipulated the DOM dynamically. Everybody good? Right. Uh, notice that it was appended to the end of the body. So, so it's way, way down here, even after the script. Look at the script. See that? Those are the, the two scripts. See that? And, and right before we close the body, notice the H1. So it truly added it as if the H1 would have lived right here. See that? It was probably that's not what we intended. Probably the content should have lived inside of the div, not the body. Right? Uh, notice that... Uh, Notice that the welcome is, 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 in, is, is flush with the content as opposed to everything else is not flush. You see that? Because it's outside of this div that, is, that has a container. Yes? So I don't get the margins. Yes? So I could, instead of adding it to the body, I could instead add it to the container. So I, I can change my selector, and it says grab me the element who has a class container fluid. Right? So I could say, Grab me dot container fluid, yes, All right, uh, and uh, um, I guess I'll just put here an element. I'll just call it element, All right? So now I'm saying no, don't add it to the body. Add it to the append it to the container fluid. Let me run that again. Notice that now it's a little bit inside, right? Uh, so now it's been appended 
to the container. Notice that it's no longer at the bottom of the body. If I open the div, notice that there's my H1, right, at the end of the, of the container. Everybody okay? And that's what a pen does. A pen adds to the bottom of the element that you, that you, that you have a hold on. Everybody good? Okay, excellent. Let's see, what else can we do? Um, we could also, one of the things that we want to be able to do is to dynamically, dynamically uh, click on create and then add elements at the bottom, right? Add, you'll be able to, uh, to add a new user at the, at the bottom, right? So let's see if we could do that. One of the first things we'd like to be able to do is to first listen for the incoming event of clicking on the create button, yes? Right? So let's look at that. Where's, that. where's that create button? The create button is somewhere here. There it is. Here's my create button. Here's my create. There's my update. All right. So somehow I need to be able to grab this element, right, and then, up, and then uh, associate a click event on this, on this button. How could I grab it? Um, you know, using CSS, I could grab, well, find me a button whose class is button, button primary, um, but that's, 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 too, that's too brittle, right? There could be many buttons who are, that are primary, right? So we should be a little more specific. We could, you know, add an ID to this. This is the, this is the create button, right? Uh, it's a good practice to name things, right? Something standard that I can then refer to it uh, from, from, from everywhere else. And same thing, idea that I would ha ha create another ID here for the, uh, for the uh, update button, right? Now I have something specific to grab onto from jQuery, yes? So I can go back in jQuery and says, okay, well, I'm grabbing the element. I'm going to grab the, um, uh, the create button, create button. Uh, I'm going to use a selector. Um, it's, an, it's an ID, so a CSS selector for that ID is hashtag uh, create button. There it is, okay? Uh, now that I grabbed it, um, I can start manipulating it, right? Uh, for instance, uh, there's my create button. I could, I could maybe, I could maybe uh, hide it, right? Notice that it's gone. It's disappeared, right? So I could programmatically manipulate any which way I want. I could change the label inside. I can change the color. I can do the style. I can make it big. I can move. You know, I can grab it from the DOM and put it somewhere else. jQuery allows me to completely rework the page dynamically, programmatically. Yes. Obviously, that's not what I want to do. Instead, what I want to do is uh, do a create button, uh, apply it a click event handler, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and say, hey, if, if this button is clicked, you know, notify me, let me know. Right? So I could, I could pass as an argument here a placeholder, a function that tells me alert click. Right? So let's do that. There's our button. And if I click on it, notice that it comes up, it says alert and the click. Yes? Right? Or, better yet, I can have a function down here that says function create a user, right? And move this alert down here and say that um, it says uh, call the create user function, call the create user function, right? And, and we can say maybe the alert is up here, right? So let's run that. So if I click and create, right, it calls that function, the create user function. Everybody good? All right. Uh, notice that I'm using alert to verify that it's actually behaving, uh, but uh, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a bad practice. Um, we can maybe perhaps instead do a log that has a create user. Right, so that, that would print it out to the console. So create, notice that it prints it out to the console. But that also is a bad, <laughs> bad uh, practice. What really would like to do when if I want to know if this is working, right? Uh, I could look at the source code. I can look at my JavaScript. I can click on it and see my source code there, right? And I could break points. I could break points to see if uh, if this is stepping through correctly, right? So if I click on the create, notice that now it's a breakpoint. I can see that this function gets called. I can step through my my algorithm, right? And so you should uh, start using this skill of practicing how to step through your code, just as just as you would step through it. If you're using Java or some other uh, server-side uh, technology, this is how you would uh, debug it uh, from the from the client. All right? You can you you have uh, you can you can see the stack. You can you can put wa watch, uh, local variables, breakpoints. It's a full-blown uh, debugger. All right, excellent.
and then you can say continue. Um, all right, excellent. So what do we want to do with the create? What is it that we want to do with the create? Well, uh, one of the things I'd like to be able to do is, is grab these input fields, right? Grab these input fields because we need to create something with it, yes? Um, all right, so let's do that. We'll, we're going to need each one of these input fields. We're going to have to grab them, right? And then, and then when we click on them, we need to read their content. What's in there? Let's see what's in there. Uh, all right, so we need to name them. I don't believe we did. There's our input fields. We're going we're gonna to uniquely name them so that we can refer to them from, from, Jake, from the, our JavaScript. Let's give them a unique ID. So this will be uh, username, username field. Right? And this will be our password field, ID password uh, field. Right? We're going to just do, do just those two. Okay? Um, actually, no, maybe, maybe first name too. So this is, um, uh, this is uh, ID, uh, first name. All right, those three. Um, all right, so from, from, uh, from, from uh, JavaScript, we, I can now grab those elements locally. I can say const. Go fetch me the the username field, right from from uh, from the DOM. Uh, their their IDs is username field, right? And we have uh, two more. This is the password, and this is the uh, what was it? First name, and uh, and the same names here. Notice that uh, there's no convention here. I'm, uh, oops. Wait, what was this? This is the first name. What, I, what did I do? I copied and pasted on top of it, probably. There's no naming convention. Right? The only thing that needs to match is that this ID obviously needs to match this ID over here. right? Uh, but it's a good practice to come up with a naming convention of things that you name. And you know it's a button, it's a field, it's whatever it is. Uh, and just to keep it straight in my head, right? I'm giving the same name of the variable local in my JavaScript so I know that they match. Yes? Uh, another naming convention that folks uh, like to use is that just to, just to remember that these objects were retrieved from the DOM, okay? They're, they're not just any constant, they're not just any variable. They are variables that are tied to the DOM, right? And, and they're tied because I grabbed them from jQuery, yeah, with jQuery. So just to remind ourselves, a, a, a naming convention that folks like to use is to put a dollar sign in front of these variables. It's very common, you know, just like you put maybe an underscore to be a local variable and whatnot, right? So it's a very, it's a fairly common to put dollar sign just to remind you, hey, this is something that tied to the DOM, right? So let's change that here, do, dollar sign, uh, dollar sign. Okay, um, all right, excellent. So there's our username. There's our. So what do we use these usernames and passwords for? Well, let's see if we can grab the values, right? We can grab those usernames and passwords and, and first names. Uh, well, we can, we can read them. We can say const, uh, here's my username. And we're going to read from the username field. I want to grab the value of that input field. Yes? And same thing with uh, all the other ones, right? So the password, uh, the first name, right? I want to grab each one of these. So password and first name. Okay, uh, and then we're just going to and uh, and see if we can grab these things, right? We can do a console log each one of these. So uh, print the username, the password, and print out the first name. First name. There we go. So if we run this and look at the console here, the console, and we type some gibberish. And we say create. Notice that there we have we have a qwr, wrt, and undefined. Oops. What happened? Undefined, huh? A first name field in the in the DOM. What did I call it? Oh, thank you. I hate computers. They always do exactly what they're told. <laughs> Not for long, though. Um, uh, all right, so, so let me refresh that. So create, and there we go. So we, we have access to the data from the input field, from the forms, yes? 
what we want to be able to do is do what? Uh, we want to, um, uh, uh, we would like to maybe create a new row with that information, right? Uh, we could, we, we, what we could do is that we already have a, um, a, a template for what we want to, to add, append here. We could grab one of these rows, right? And perhaps copy it, clone it, right? And then append, append at the end. All right, so let's try to do that. Let's see, what row do we want to copy? Uh, let's see, we have, um, these are the headers. Uh, these are, this, th there's a row, there it is. There's a row here. Uh, with for Alice and there's another row for Bob. So let's grab one of these rows and maybe give it a uh, give it a um, uh, an ID uh, that uh, says that says um, a row template. Let's say or user template. User row template. Okay, it's a, I'm going to use this as a template and I'm going to clone it. Right, and then I'm going to try and append it where I'm going to try and append it to the body. So meaning it's going to append it and it's going to add it to the to the bottom of this of this uh, T body, right? So I'm going to need I'm going to need both things. I'm going to need the body so I can append it to the body. I'm also going to need this this row template. So let me grab those two things, All right? So let me grab the um, here. I'll need the template. Now what what would be wrong uh, of uh, by declaring this as an ID? Anybody? I need the body as well. I'm going to grab the body. T body. D. Yes. Right, right. So um, we're going to clone this and we're going to paste it underneath. And now I'm going to have two IDs with the same value, right? Uh, as I add it to the DOM. So I'm going to break the, uh, the uniqueness or requirement here. So instead of putting an ID, I'm just going to make it a class instead. Right, because it's going to be cloning it multiple times. Yes. Say again. Uh, it's, 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 there's no requirement, right? It's just it's just a uh, a good practice that IDs will be unique, right? It's an expectation that IDs are unique, but 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 uh, jQuery will will grab everything that that matches. So it's not the first, it's all matches. Yeah, everything that matches. Yep. Yeah, jQuery, if you say, give me all the paragraphs, it, it, it grabs an array of all the paragraphs that match. Okay. Uh, all right, excellent. So, so let's do that. Uh, we have that. So this, this becomes a dot, right? Not a, not a, not a, not a hash. Um, all right, so in create, in create a user, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, use this, this user template, which we have already. We, we grab the template. I have the template. Right, and, uh, and what we're going to do is that we're going to clone it. We're going to say clone, and this is this is going to be uh, const the clone. Right, this is the or the row. Okay, and now I and now I can grab that row and then append it to the body, right, the table body, which I already grabbed. There it is. We can say t body dot append the row, the brand new row. So let's try it out. Let's try it out. So we're going to say. Uh, create. Notice that it appended Alice. Right? Every time I type create, it appends Alice at the bottom. You see that? With all the buttons on the right hand side, everything's uh, ready to go. You see that? Excellent. But this is, this is not exactly what we expected. Notice that it still has Alice, Alice, Alice everywhere, right? We really want this to be whatever the username is that I typed in there. Yes? Okay. So let's, uh, let's refresh this. If I, if I refresh, everything's gone. Uh, you know, to make this permanent, really, we would need to send it to the server somewhere permanent. Yes, it's not enough to just add it to the DOM. Here, we're adding it to a temporary DOM that would be go away if I just refresh. Right. Uh, so anyway, but now that I have the row, I could. Right. I have this. This is what I have. Right, this is what I have. What I what I could do. I have a copy of this in memory. Yes. Uh, what I could do is walk this this DOM. Uh, this DOM row, right? And, and what I'd like to be able to do is replace, right, the first column that says Alice, I'd like to replace it with the value that I grabbed from the input field, right? Right? And same thing for the password, same thing for the first name, last name, and so on and so forth. Let's try doing that, right? Uh, to do that, I'm going to need to be able to grab these things. So how do I grab them? Well, I could grab them by index. You know, jQuery allows you to do that. Meaning it says grab all the TDs under the row, and I want to grab the first one, the second one, the third one. You could do that, but that's very tedious. 
right? The, the better thing to do is to uniquely name each one of these, right, with something that is, is meaningful, right? So for instance, what we'll do is that we'll give these, these classes here, and we'll say that this is um, a username, uh, username f um, a column, and this will be, oops, this will be the um, password column, although it makes no sense to do anything with a password since password should always be just star, right? Uh, with class, probably this would be first name, first name column. All right, so let's just try those three. Okay, so let's, let's go walk back here in the source code and says, okay, well, I got the row, and it's a clone of the original template. Right? I just need to find those three uh, columns and replace their content. Right? So let's do that. So what you could do here is that I can grab each one of these. We can say uh, const const um, uh, grab it username column. Right? From the row, I want to walk down that, that object. I want to find, find something in there, retrieve something from under that row that matches a selector that has a class of user name column. So find me something that has that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, has that particular class, which happens to be this table, table data. Yes? Everybody okay? Uh, and we can do that with each one of these. So the username, the uh, password, oops, uh, let's see, password, password, and then first name, column, and then first name column. Okay? Right? So I'm grabbing all those three. Uh, and once I find them, I can now manipulate them. Right? So what do I want to do? I want to replace their content with the data that I am retrieving from the input field. Yes? Right? So let's do that. Let's do that. We'll say, um, uh, we'll say uh, uh, username column. The content, you can, I can, you can, you can, there's two ways. One of them is if it's just plain text, you, you can just say text. Uh, or you can say .html. I can replace the content with the following HTML. Right? So the, the content that I want to put in there is the actual username. Right? And same thing with the username password and the first name. What I want to put in the password is the actual password from the input field and the first name in the first name column. Yes? All right. And then I'm going to append it to the, to the table data, to, to the table body. All right, let's try it out. Let's refresh. So there's uh, Alice, Bob, Charlie, uh, Charlie password, uh, and this is Charlie. So I want to say create. Notice that indeed, right, it took the, the Charlie uh, username, the password, and the Charlie. I didn't, we didn't do anything with the last name, with the role, or anything, right? Uh, but everything else seems to be uh, working, right? I can do another one. So there's uh, Dan, uh, Dan, and there's uh, Daniel. And say create, right? And it adds it at the bottom, right? Something that you might want to do is notice that every time we edit the input field, something convenient would be that these clear out, right? They clear out so that you don't have to clear them yourself. So we could do that too. We can say the grab all these username value and just clear it out. Just put it empty, empty your empty string. You know, set the value. This is an example of what I told you yesterday, right? That many of these functions is very common in JavaScript. That uh, functions behave differently whether they you pass arguments or not, right? And so in this case, for instance, I'm not passing any argument. See that? So it behaves as a read, right? And instead, if I pass it arguments, it behaves as a write. See that? That's very common in JavaScript. As opposed to in Java, you would have a setter and a getter. Right? In JavaScript, the, 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 uh, the, uh, what folks do right, the, uh, that's very common is to use the same exact function, but behaves differently whether you pass arguments or not. Not that these are overloaded. There's no such thing in JavaScript. There's no overloading in JavaScript. It's just that the functions are written in such a way that they behave as if they were overloaded. It's just one function, right? and it's a smart function. All right, so let's try it out. If we rewrite, so we create, right? And notice that they cleared out. Everybody good? Everybody good? Okay, awesome. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, how about uh, deleting something that is already there? 
Right, so let's do that. Uh, so for instance, in the, um, we would like to maybe do, do the delete. All right, let's do that next.